Why was Ross's name mix-up moment purely accidental? Take thee, Rachel. Was Matthew Perry even funnier than Chandler? <laughs> and how did David Schwimmer's onset prank scare the bejesus out of Jennifer Aniston? <laughs> Hi, I'm Clive. Let's start. I take thee, Rachel. This is one of the most memorable Ross moments. It was so unexpected. Probably the best friends cliffhanger ever. Take thee. Emily. <laughs> like there'd be anybody else. <laughs> and it makes it even more shocking that the line wasn't in the script. The idea for it appeared when David Schwimmer once accidentally said Rachel while talking to Emily. No, 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 it didn't happen in the actual wedding scene, but a bit earlier. David and Helen Baxendale, the actress who played Emily, rehearsed a scene. David said, Rachel, the taxi is here, instead of Emily, the taxi is here. The Friends writer Greg Malins heard it and immediately had his eureka moment. Sure, this idea was utterly crazy, but it did give us a lot of laughs. And it also worked well for Baxendale. She didn't want to keep being in Friends because she was pregnant, and the mix-up provided an excellent reason to quickly write her out of the show. Now, it's hard to imagine what kind of ending the writers had in mind before David's slip of the tongue happened. Too bad they never shared what they initially planned, but we're sure that the I Take The Rachel ending worked out for the best. How Joey Jumped on the Bed Remember the episode in Season 3 where Joey unexpectedly had his arm in a sling? Chandler gave a very Joey-like reason for his injury back then. See, Joe, that's why your parents told you not to jump on the bed. But turns out, it wasn't scripted. If you're a hardcore Friends fan, you might remember that right before the episode where Joey had his arm injury was another funny episode, the one where no one's ready. In it, the Friends had a hilarious fight over the chair that resulted in all those memorable moments with Essence of the Chair and Joey wearing all of Chandler's clothes. While filming one of the fights, an unexpected thing happens. We both look at each other, look at the chair, and neither one of us are sitting in it. Matt LeBlanc later recalled the scene. So we both race to the chair and I have to step over the coffee table and land on this big, huge, comfortable chair. I don't even think it qualifies as a stunt. Sure, it didn't look like a stunt. And yet, Matt suddenly found himself falling between the table and the chair. So he used his hand to stop the fall and dislocated his shoulder. LeBlanc was in quite a bit of pain, but he did the rest of the episode like nothing had happened. And in the next one, his injury became part of the act. Christina Applegate's Trouble with Phoebe when Rachel's sister Amy came over for Thanksgiving, she gave us quite a few laughs and also convinced us why their father once said that he's only proud of Rachel. You know it would be incredible if you guys died. <laughs> Amy certainly did quite a few questionable things, such as getting offended by Rachel not wanting to give her Emma in case she dies. Gee, she couldn't even remember her niece's name was Emma and kept calling her Emily or Emmett. And later, she decided that Emma was Phoebe's name and couldn't even understand that Phoebe was trying to correct her. Phoebe! Why does she keep making that noise? It's one of the funniest scenes in that episode with Amy, and it was also Christina Applegate's favorite line from her character. But it almost didn't happen. That was written as a rewrite in front of the audience, and I thought it was hilarious, Applegate once revealed. So yeah, the line wasn't in the script. But the next guest star proved to be much more articulate than Amy. Paolo's Italian Eloquence Ah, Paolo, the Italian hunk of a man who so suddenly appeared in Ross's way and into Rachel's heart. Although we kept on rooting for Ross and wanted Paolo out of the way, most viewers still like to look at him and listen to him speaking Italian. Guarda la luna, guarda le stelle, guarda tutte le cose belle. But did you know that these and other lines weren't in the script? I made up most of the Italian spoken by Paolo, the actor Cosimo Fusco revealed. When he was asked to improvise on the set, he was surprised at first because his English wasn't so good. But when they said that he didn't have to speak English, but instead throw out some Italian lines, Fusco was confident that he could do it. As we all know, he did great. Paolo's appearance in the series was not just memorable for fans, it was memorable for the actor, too. He just loved working with Jennifer Aniston and the rest of the cast. Oh, I bet he did. And now, we're moving on to the guy who did most of the improvisation on Friends. Matthew Perry, the king of improv. 
Chandler is funny, but we can assume that Perry is even funnier. After all, so many of Chandler's lines were improvised on the spot by the actor himself. Let's start with season two, the episode where Joey recommended a tailor to his friend and couldn't remember when he came to him for the first time. He was like, I was 15. No, wait, 16. No, no, excuse me, 15. All right, when was 1990? And Chandler's answer to Joey is a line that became a favorite for so many fans. You have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. <laughs> and it was totally Perry's idea. In the script, he was just supposed to scoff and not say anything. But the Q-tip line made the scene so much funnier. Another funny addition Matthew made was in The One After Vegas. After Ross and Rachel got married, Joey said that he didn't even know they were dating again. Chandler was supposed to say that they weren't dating but were drunk, but the audience liked his own line much more. Well, I don't think they're as much dating as they are two bottles of vodka walking around in human form. And even the very last line of the show was also improvised by Perry. Remember how Rachel asked if anyone wanted to go get some coffee? He was only supposed to say, sure, but he just couldn't resist adding some spice to the line. Sure. Where? <laughs> It was so amazing to have the show end on such a high and funny note. But Perry wasn't the only one who'd come up with lines funnier than the scripted ones. Jennifer Aniston did it too. Rachel's Worst Hangover Coming back to the episode after Rachel and Ross got married in Vegas. Remember how Ross asked Rachel to remain his wife so that he didn't have to get a third divorce? Needless to say, she was furious. And when, once again, he called the relationship a marriage, she totally flipped out. Oh, Ross, come on! This is not this is not a marriage! This is the world's worst hangover! <laughs> According to the script, Rachel was supposed to demand that Ross stop saying the word marriage, but the audience didn't respond to this line well. It would be kind of dull, huh? So Aniston got an idea about this hangover line, and it was terrific. In fact, the audience liked it so much that the Friends editor Stephen Prime had to edit down the uproar of laughter and applause in this scene. And while we're still talking about Rachel, let's see another scene that involved her and Chandler. Would you please just... <laughs> You probably had no idea that Chandler getting hit in the head wasn't in the script. But it looks so hilarious, and Jen and Matthew's expressions were so genuine that it would have been a shame to leave this scene on the cutting room floor. How Carol Couldn't Handle Ross at the beginning of the series, there wasn't a soul who didn't feel sorry for Ross. His marriage ended so abruptly, his high school crush reappeared in his life and he felt like he didn't have a chance with her. It was a sad time in his life. And it got even sadder when Ross couldn't even concentrate on his date because Carol and Susan were at the same restaurant. You probably remember that his date didn't go well back then, and he ended up having dinner with just Carol. I love you. It was Ross's last effort to win Carol back, and David Schwimmer played it so perfectly that Jane Sibbett couldn't keep from crying. My eyes welled with tears as we were doing the scene because he was so tender and so loving. The actress recalled, Yes, she's right. The scene really was sweet, and her crying made it even more perfect. So it's no wonder the editors decided to keep this take. But let's talk about funnier stuff, because it's friends after all. Everything about Marcel People from the movie industry always say that the hardest thing to do on a set is work with babies and animals. After all, they just do their own thing and you can't really control them. That's what happened to the monkey that played Ross's pet, Marcel. Katie, the female monkey who played him, behaved, well, like a monkey on the set. If you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. <laughs> So it's no wonder that some of the scenes with Marcel weren't scripted. For example, the primate's trainer once shared that in one of them, Katie the monkey threw a bra at Jennifer Aniston. Can you imagine? But although it might sound surprising, it wasn't the most shocking thing for Aniston on the set of Friends. Ross and Ben pranking Rachel don't know about you, but for me, this is the best scene with Ross and Ben. Well, except for the holiday armadillo, maybe. So this incident happened after Ross asked Rachel to look after Ben for a bit, and she taught him some nasty pranks. Saran wrap on the toilet seat so the pee goes everywhere. Sure, Ross didn't like it because he hated practical jokes. But at the end of the episode, he and Ben pulled the ultimate prank on Rachel. No, you guys, I, I, oh, 
and then it turned out that it was just a dummy. It was hilarious, but you'll love this scene even more when you learn that it was an actual prank David Schwimmer and young Cole Sprouse pulled on Jennifer Aniston. They wanted a more genuine reaction from the actress, and no one told her what was going to happen. Jen even broke character and yelled out, Oh my god, David! And it had to be dubbed over later. What can I say? The prank worked out pretty well. The cameo that changed everything. As you can see now, most of the Friends cast are really good at ad-libbing, but none of them could compare to the timeless comedy icons Billy Crystal and Robin Williams. Their cameo in season three was unforgettable. You know, you just feel and you get, you know? Like when you go bowling and you know you're in somebody else's shoes? That's the one. <laughs> and it was completely improvised. The cameo wasn't in the script, and the whole thing happened because Williams and Crystal were working at a neighboring set and stopped by one day. The Friends writers asked if they wanted to do a cameo, and the comedian said yes. Williams and Crystal invented the story behind their characters on the go. Oh, can I have a nice you? Could you please not just give me this thing, all right? <laughs> Interestingly, Matt LeBlanc took a small part in the improvisation. So you're the gynecologist? Hey, I'm trying to have a private conversation about you. <laughs> and Courtney Cox also ad-libbed her final line in the scene. So, Monica, what were you going to tell us? I have no idea. <laughs> Not surprisingly, this whole thing turned out to be pure gold. If you want to learn more about the best celebrity cameos on Friends, watch our video about them. And stay awesome!